Hi everyone. Jordan said something. Hey everyone, let's get straight to the core. In science, we're now seeing that everything that we think of as reality is a big infinite field of vibrating quantum energy. Um, well, kind of. It's not so much that you're wrong, it's that I don't think you understand anything of what you just said. Now, quantum in layman's terms means very small increments into which many forms of energy are divided. Yes, but look at definition 2b. That's the one that's relevant. Many physical quantities are quantized, meaning that they come in very small chunks. A great example of this is the energy of light of a particular frequency, which comes in chunks of energy E equals hf, where f is the frequency and h is a very small constant called Planck's constant. Each such chunk is called a photon, and that's an example of a quantum. You can never have part of a quantum. You have the whole quantum or none of it. If you were to divide the energy in a photon, you'd have to reduce the frequency. You could split a photon into two photons with half the energy each, but they'd only have half the frequency, and that misses the point. The energy of light of a particular frequency cannot be divided into chunks smaller than hf. Is there any chance Jordan got that? Okay, you have a crowd of people. A person is kind of hard to split into pieces because a piece of a person isn't a person. Well, I, I suppose you could say that one part would be, but... Okay, you're not allowed to chop people into pieces, that's my point. So no matter how you divide the crowd into smaller groups, any group that exists, that is, has more than zero members, has at least one member, one whole person. The crowd is quantized into quanta of one person each. Okay? Thus, we can see that everything is made up of vibrating molecules. No, I just gave you an example of something that isn't. Light. And those molecules are made up of atoms, also vibrating. And those atoms are made up of even more tinier particles with vast amounts of empty space in between, all vibrating, all spinning around and moving, all of the time. Scientists around the world are just beginning to understand this. Well, I... Guess that depends on how you define just. J.J. Thomson discovered the electron in 1897, proving that atoms consist of smaller particles. Planck developed the quantum hypothesis, the E equals HF thing I mentioned, in 1900. The hypothesis was confirmed by Einstein in 1905. Quantum field theory got started with quantum electrodynamics in the 1920s. I wouldn't say scientists are just beginning to understand it. Even something that appears dead or inanimate, such as a crystal or a dead rat, once you reach a certain level, there are countless particles moving in waves constantly through this seemingly non-living thing. Okay, two things. One, you have previously stated that crystals are alive. Are you now retracting that? Two, the defining trait of life is not motion, but metabolism, which comes down to self-replication. This moving field concept, it has had many names over the aeons. Names including the source field, the unified field, pertaining to the unified field theory. We've heard the God Source Consciousness field, which is kind of way off in that New Age left field. But in the end, we've decided that for the sake of brevity and to keep it simple, for now we're just going to call it the field. These are not the same field. They can't be, because the unified field in physics is not something spiritual, esoteric, or mystical. It's something physical. Quantum field theory is one modern name for many ancient teachings which stretch back way into ancient Egypt and Greece. Um, no. Though today it exists as a branch of quantum theoretical physics, and really owes much of its modern Western adaption to researcher and interrogation specialist Cleve Baxter. Um, no. However, Baxter didn't set out to find scientific evidence. Wait, what? H hang on. Go back. Though today it exists as a branch of quantum theoretical physics, and really owes much of its modern Western adaption to researcher and interrogation specialist Cleve Baxter. Cleve Baxter? Uh, try Max Born, Werner Heisenberg, Paul Dirac. Who the onk is Cleve Baxter? No, he was interested in the human mind and its effects while under hypnosis. There are some amazing stories about hypnosis out there. Hypnosis has been used to help people heal, or even have instantaneous out-of-body experiences. Yeah, 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 there are some legit uses of hypnosis, and yes, you can get a willing subject to hallucinate. But can we get back to the subject, please? He hypnotized a CIA agent to retrieve and give to him a classified document without even knowing it had happened. It was because of this experiment in particular that his studies connected him with the CIA, 
after which led him to the use of the polygraph machine, also commonly known as a lie detector machine. Cleve Baxter was fascinated by polygraphs and later on in life actually founded the Baxter School of Lie Detection, located in San Diego, California. But the exciting part of the story occurs much before then, in a time when he got the idea to test the biorhythms of something other than a human and hooked his lie detector up to a plant. Baxter wanted to see if he could get a human-like response out of his new plant buddy by threatening its well-being somehow. Aha, I shall get a match and burn the leaf. At that time, the plant was about 15 feet away from where he was standing. The only new thing that occurred was the thought. The very moment the imagery of burning that leaf entered into Baxter's mind, the polygraph recording pen moved rapidly to the top of the chart. And as any good scientist would, he decided to test this under controlled con <sighs> No, of course not. Baxter went into a flurry. He connected yogurt bacteria, ordinary unfertilized chicken eggs from his refrigerator, and even live human cells to his polygraph, and continued to get stunning results. And he published his findings in a well-respected peer review <laughs> No, of course not. Baxter wanted to make sure that the information that was passed to and from his mind to the plant was not done through known electromagnetic frequencies, such as microwaves or radio waves. So he continued testing on various living things, and he had his test subjects contained in Faraday cages to block electrical signals, and then later using a state-of-the-art shielded room. And still he was able to prove that there was no detectable connections between the subject and still get the response. Then it sounds like you're saying he proved that his thoughts had nothing to do with it, and that this was just a case of confirmation bias and a correlation causation fallacy. Baxter took a saliva sample from O'Leary, who then left for the San Diego airport to fly to Phoenix, Arizona, some 300 miles away. They synchronized watches, and then Dr. O'Leary's saliva cells were monitored in the lab the entire time. These cells were only able to stay alive for 10 to 12 hours, but still, Baxter was able to detect spikes in the activity of O'Leary's cells when O'Leary nearly missed his flight, as the plane took off, and again as it landed, and when O'Leary's son failed to meet him at the airport. And did he have, like, 10 other saliva samples from people he knew were just sitting there twiddling their thumbs, you know, just to use as a control? And was there a blinding protocol in place? No, of course not! This field phenomenon was starting to call attention from all over the world, since then, there have been many more scientists and researchers who have dedicated their lives to studying this work, and their countless findings are enough to have created quite a substantial impact in the scientific community, which is not an easy feat, mind you. False. All attempts to reproduce Baxter's results under controlled conditions have failed. This whole thing was thoroughly debunked in the 70s. The scientists you showed are widely regarded as crackpots, and they do not represent the scientific consensus or even a significant minority view. Yet still, somehow the mainstream media doesn't like talking about these things. Really? Mainstream media almost always sides with the woo crowd because that's where the money is. Of course, this is the likely point that the skeptics will jump out of the woodwork and say, it's not a conspiracy, it's just been debunked. It's not a conspiracy, it's just been de- You're no fun. And as we've looked at this, this is what we've found. When someone does an experiment, their own thoughts and intentions have an effect on the outcome of the experiment, too. Yes, bias can be an issue, as in Baxter's case. That's why scientists use controls. The Mythbusters actually demonstrated this perfectly. However, in their follow-up tests with an EEG, they found no effect at all, leading them to believe that the myth was busted. What they didn't consider, however, was that their very mental presence around the experiment was far greater than the energy of, say, the catapulted eggs. And thus there was no reaction from the Dracaena because it was tuned to the individuals who were paying such close attention to it. Okay, so you're not talking it. about bias. You're talking about thoughts directly affecting reality. And your evidence for this is that you get negative results once you eliminate bias. Jordan, if you get positive results without a control and negative results with a control, it's because the cause of the positive result wasn't what you were testing for, but something else, something that has now been eliminated by the controls. This is typical across the board in repeat experiments which profess to disprove the effect. And that's why it should be dismissed as pseudoscientific garbage. You have just stated that the only way you can get a positive result is if you are biased in favor of it and you don't use any controls. You have presented an unfalsifiable hypothesis. 
Jordan, I have said this so many times, it's just getting silly. The way to test if an idea holds up is by attacking it mercilessly, trying everything you can to prove it false. Good ideas hold up to this. Everything that has ever been accepted by science has survived this kind of scrutiny, and that's why it has become accepted. But what's especially stupid in this case is that the Mythbusters, if you watch the episode, actually automated the final experiment they did, eliminating themselves and their intentions from the equation. So even if I were to grant you your bullshit excuse about negativity being a factor, it doesn't apply in this case. Taking it even further, Baxter looked at food and realized that one of his plants would respond in stress when he was eating. One? So not the rest of them? Well, if this were true, wouldn't they all have reacted like that? He found that the consciousness of all of the plants were so actively aware of their fellow companion being eaten that they exhibited signs of fear. This takes the whole being conscious of what you eat phenomenon to a whole nother level. That's right, vegans. Apparently, you can't even eat plants. So what can we actually eat without causing harm to anything? Baxter's tests actually have also found the answer to this question. He discovered that if you were to think and feel extreme gratitude for whatever it was that you were about to eat, sending love for all of the people and those involved to bring it together to make this dish for you, and even the earth itself for growing all of the food was key. If plants are conscious, just like animals, including humans, then wouldn't the same reasoning apply to animals, including humans? You're not causing any stress if you're grateful? By this reasoning, shouldn't you be able to, I don't know, uh, rape someone and just be grateful, thus thinking that you haven't actually caused any psychological damage? Jordan, it's not your mindset that determines what effects your actions have, but the actions themselves. Oh, and once again, you have shown that you know absolutely nothing about quantum mechanics because none of this has anything to do with it. See ya.